same long prehensile tongue. They just don't have to be as tall as a giraffe because they're already in a low dense forest environment. Their stripes are really good use in the forest area. It's a good camouflage. It looks like sunlight and tree branches as opposed to zebras where they're running in herds to confuse their predators. See, black, white, black, white, black, white, not knowing one zebra apart from another. So the same kind of camouflage used a different way does not mean they're related. Out to your left hand side, take a look. You'll see a black rhino out there. Oh, up there. Now, black rhinos get about 3,000 pounds. See them? Oh, up there. There's one up ahead as well, just past this little tree out there. And another one over here. They have no natural predators oh, wow. in the world, wow. but they're endangered. And that's because they're poached for their horns. And so their horn is the same thing that can be found in our fingernails and hair. It's a mineral called keratin. So it contains no monetary value. But due to poaching, there's only about 5,000 black rhino left in the world today. The conservation efforts make a difference. As we come up ahead, straight ahead and out to your left hand side, you'll see some lighter brown animals. Those are greater kudu. They're the second tallest antelope in Africa. Also some darker orange. Those are bongo. Bongos are known as the ghosts of the forest because they're rarely seen. Both male and female bongo have those horns atop their heads. So to tell them apart, one reason, one way, is that the male's coats get darker as they age. But for now, we'll head on up over this hill and around the corner. Our next stop is going to be at the Saki River. We'll see what we can find out here. Coal sand. 
something found in electronics like cell phones, cell phone batteries, and stuff like that. So, by collectively recycling our old electronics, we can all help make a difference. And it really does make a difference. And it's as simple as recycling something like an old cell phone. Was he dressed? See it? Now to your right hand side, you'll see a baobab tree. Baobab trees are also known as the upside down tree because they look upside down with its big roots in the air. When in fact it's remaining leafless for nine months of the year to retain tons of water in its trunk. Giraffe's gonna be on your side, it's gonna be over here when we go around. But most people consider right about here the most beautiful view in the entire reserve since you can see for miles after all. I think I see some giraffe oh, no. out there and some awesome cattle. Let's come down for a side. closer look. Look at giraffe right there. Now giraffe are the tallest mammals in the world. They can get as tall as a two-story building. What you'll see closer to us though, right now, to your right hand side, are Ancoli cattle. Their horns atop their head can get as long as six feet. But it's also really light on them too. If you were to look inside their horn, it's like honeycomb shapes that stores blood vessels to help regulate their body heat. And coley cattle are the only animal in the entire reserve that could become domesticated too. Is there another giraffe? In the entire reserve, yeah. The uh, the Maasai people, the Maasai tribe, East Africa. See it? They yeah, domesticate and coley cattle and use them to establish wealth. Out to your left hand side atop that den is a hyena. Hyenas, most people consider them as hundred percent scavengers. Top of, of the rock. Not true. They hunt about 90% of their own food. Okay, hey, look at the giraffe real quick. Giraffe. They have a female dominant um, hierarchy too. And then the highest right rated there. male is still below the lowest rated female. See him? He's right there sleeping. Really incredible jaw strength here, really crushing the bones, eating bone marrow, and eating everything. <laughs> Let's take a look at that giraffe out to your right hand side, chowing down. They'll actually eat 18 to 20 hours a day. And to help them eat is their long prehensile tongue. Their tongues are 18 inches long and it's longer than a foot. And prehensile means it's able to wrap around the tree branches to bring in the leaves. We'll pass a few termite mounds too. They're made of dirt, dung, and saliva. In the African sun though, they become as hard as concrete. Sometimes you'll see large animals using them as a scratching post and smaller animals use it as a lookout point if it falls down. Coming up to your left hand side, you see a couple baby giraffe out there too. Now newborn giraffe stand at six feet tall, which is also the length of the giraffe that they have since mom still stands up while she gives birth. See two of them? There's three of them. There's the one all the way up on the top. And there's another giraffe coming up straight ahead, actually, to your right side, too. Now, giraffes have the same amount of vertebrae in their necks as we as humans do. We each have seven vertebrae, but they also have a lot more ball and socket joints throughout, so that makes their necks a lot more bendy than ours. We'll see some baby giraffes again on your left-hand side, but if you look to your right, you'll see a wil what wildebeest, a white-bearded wildebeest. When they migrate, their numbers go as high as 1.5 million at a time. And they travel anywhere between 500 up to 1,000 miles a year. But as we go a little closer to you, take a look at, at those baby giraffes to your left. They're a Maasai giraffe. It's different than reticulated giraffe. Reticulated giraffe are actually a more stuffed animal than Maasai. They have a very solid spot and a very defined line in between each one. Whereas you might see those Maasai giraffe, their spots are very loose, kind of doing whatever they want. That's the difference. Now while they're eating, you might see them sticking their tongue out too. Their tongues are actually a purplish gray color. Scientifically though, we don't know the reason why it's that color, but we have a guess. Maybe it's sunproof. You heard that pink color cattle out there. Coming up to your left and right hand side, you'll definitely see these white bearded wildebeest. Another name for them is new, because that's kind of like the sound that they make. One, and at yeah, night, one, yeah. they sleep in rows. That's to make more quick and orderly escape, in a way, if they're ambushed in the middle of the night. Oh, we 
one coming up to your left hand side will definitely get a view of those giraffe out there too. Oh, it was you guys that hauled us up, huh? I think it was this guy. He was trouble. He held us up. Out to your left hand side coming up, you'll see some Patterson Eland. They are the largest antelope in Africa. These are two females. The adult male is even larger, too. But about 40% of their population live on protected land. They're also able to jump straight to six feet in the air straight up. But take a look at these giraffe out here to your left. That would be called the tower. It's another name for a group of giraffe. <laughs> and there's one at the top of this little hill, too. On your one. left side, I mean. He's hiding. <laughs> right in the corner. He's up there hiding. <laughs> He's showing us his butt. He's like, take a look at my butt. Boy. Yeah. Boy. But let's head into elephant country. <laughs> Oftentimes you'll see elephants pushing over trees. It's a good sign for that. They'll push over trees because they don't want to bother reaching up to get the leaves on the very tip top. They are strong after all they get away with something like that. And up ahead, if you look straight over my head, you might see that African elephant out there. We'll come around for a better look. Out to your left as well, just past those trees, you'll see some mandrels. They are the largest monkeys in the world. Elephants on your right are the largest male in the world. Elephants will have will wave their ears back and forth to cool themselves down like a big fan. Right down here, we'll get a closer view of them, I believe. Also, their long tusk is prehensile too at the end, so it helps pick up things like food or dirt to throw on their back. Even the very end of their tusk is kind of like a bottom lip as well. <laughs> that was awesome. Well, let's head deeper into elephant country and see if we can't find any more African elephants. Oftentimes you'll see them migrating in large family groups. Usually adult females lead the migration and they go wherever they want. And that used to include them traveling over and destroying farmers' crops. Rabbit. And since the farmers were not very pleased with their crops being destroyed, the Disney Conservation Fund did a research on African elephants to help protect them. Now from that research we learned that elephants are afraid of bees. And we rolled with it, we found a solution now. The farmers now have beehive fences around their area, around their crops. So that's steering the elephants clear. The elephants are not going near the crops anymore, so they're safe. The farmers are happy because they have their crops again, and they have another source of income now. They get to sell the honey from the bees. It even helps the declining bee population by adding just a few more beehives in the world. So truly, everybody wins. That's how they get their name. 
It's the Afrikaans word wide is fight. Sounds like white, and that's how the name stuck. But they also have very poor vision. They cannot see someone standing still within a hundred feet in a dimmer light. But they make that for it by having a good sense of hearing and smell too. Oh, so cool. They also love rolling in the mud. The muddier the better in a way. It's like their own sunscreen. side will pass at Bontabok too. Bontaboks at one point in time were nearly extinct in the wild. There were fewer and fewer of them out there until local farmers protected them on their own land and their numbers came back. There's another cheetah out to your left hand side coming up. Cheetahs are the only cats in the whole wide world that cannot retract their claws. Their claws are always out to have firm hold of the ground, kind of like a permanent soccer cleat since they rely so much on their high speed chase. They also can't meow. They do a little chirping sound instead. The line up there. The line's on the top. His job is to protect the family, keep everyone safe. The lioness closest to us, her and the other lioness, have to do most of the hunting. The lioness and the lion. Two. Lions will rest 18 to 20 hours a day. And that's because they're not cats. They do most of hunting and activities at night. They're going to sleep at night. Awareness and awareness turns into positive actions towards wildlife all around. 
it's really hard to care about something that you don't know anything about. So tell everyone fun facts and stories. That's a really wonderful thing. If you want to see some more African animals, check out the Gorilla Falls Exploration Trail as well. It's at the top of the hill as you exit on your right hand side. And out there you can see some western mountain gorillas, meerkats, and an underwater view of the Nile hippopotamus maybe too. If I have any wilderness explorers aboard, this is simple one to the truck you're on today. Well, I hope it was worth that long extra wait after all. Again, I hope you had fun. My name was Rebecca. No, it's never good Did you to like eat it? wild animals or own Just. snacks, like giving yeah, dice like popcorn. Our yummies are not good for their tummies. And in just a moment, we're going to make you like it a lot? as yeah. we are headed that okay. way. I'm going to shut it off, okay? Say bye. I don't want you to leave anything behind here in Harambe.